we are now in the BMW i3 S, the 120 amp hour version, which is very confusing, but it is uh, about 42 kilowatt hours. And I read that it has uh, 38 kilowatt hours available. So in this video, I'm gonna test the range. I call it the TBTP, yeah, <laughs> which is the Tesla Bjorn test procedure, which is to drive it at 90 kilometers per hour on this stretch here near Nebenes. Um, I'm guessing over 200 kilometers. It's winter now, but uh, should be a somewhat dry road. So yeah, we're gonna see. Um, let me see how how we're looking now. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so we are at 99.5 percent. Yeah, I've been driving from Oslo to Nebenes here. This is a supercharger, by the way. Uh, so I heated up the drivetrain, and uh, we also preheated the car. You know, we do all the preparation for a long trip. Now, gum here shows you kind of low uh, um, range, you know, 170 kilometers. You're thinking, whoa, what the heck? Why shouldn't it be 250? Well, it has something to do with this because I really hammered it. Well, um, actually, this is, uh, it goes down when you're parked, but you see on the screenshot there, yeah, it was way higher when I came here. So um, that's why the, the range estimation is a bit low. So now we will just wait for 100%. It should finish soon. Uh, Preheating the hmm, I get the impression that it's not hot enough. But there's a cool feature with it. I'm gonna show you something if I switch off the car now, all right? So, uh, the i3 is actually a pretty good EV because it has many EV features. Um, you see here, if I hold on this button here. It will start preheating and it will preheat for half an hour. That is a nice feature to be able to preheat from the key because I don't have access to, to the app, but I can preheat from the key. And also when you start the car like this, uh, now there are many reasons why this is a good EV. It has, it shows you state of charge here on the screen. You can ch switch between other set, other uh, uh, numbers here, but at least it's, it's fairly easy to find state of charge. That is important as an EV driver to know how many percent you have. And also you can see it here along with other uh, useful information. Oh, 100% now. Ooh, ooh, what the heck? Oh, okay, it says 100%, it's rounded up there. 100% there, but still 99.5 here. Uh, and also the region here is very strong. That's another feature I consider uh, important in EV. And uh, uh, the onboard charger on this car, this new model is 11 kilowatt. So it means that on those, uh, you see there are some uh, some 11 kilowatt, I mean there are some 22 kilowatt uh, char charging stations over there. This car will be able to utilize 11 of those. That is nice, uh, that is better than uh, most other cars in this class which has only uh, 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger. So, uh, we are just waiting now for the last 0.5%. Yeah, it's very important to get that last juice. Um, so, um, if you go to navigation, wait, hold on. Hold on. Okay, there are some buttons here. Yeah, I'm gonna do another video uh, to show you. I mean, do, to uh, show you the, the car. This will will be primarily for um, for range test. But I found a cool feature. Uh, let me see. If you go to menu, all right, you go here, all right. I said this is not a touch screen. The first thing I tried was to to touch the screen. <laughs> um, but if you go to my vehicle. Uh, vehicle, I mean, I mean, okay, vehicle settings, uh, no wait, no wait, what was it again? Yeah, yeah, vehicle settings, okay, okay, uh, and then, yeah, lights, lights, okay, there, okay, see, interior lighting, you can change ambient light, but it doesn't have that many options like the i8 had, so it has only the classic one, which is like a red, red-ish color, you see it in the, in the, at night, and then the modern is white, so the LED can change. But here, elect, uh, exterior lightning, right? <clears throat> so I was like, ooh, it has the same feature like uh, like Kia's and Hyundai's where you can change you know, the one touch turn signal, right? Um, I'm gonna show you here. So if I do this, three times, all right? And I was like, oh yes, oh yes. So let's change it to like five or seven. Uh, um, no, it has only three times or one time. <laughs> Okay, how is it now? <laughs> this is a BMW feature. 
Yeah. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Or you can do it like this. Uh, you can switch it to three times like this, right? Uh, and then you can do this. Uh, if you double tap, you will cancel it. So three times, but see. <laughs> this is, by the way, the turn signal. You use this turn signal to signal where you are supposed to turn or change lane. So this is something that most BMW drivers don't know about this feature. It's like a, it's like a hidden feature. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're just waiting for the last 0.5% now. Um, it's taking a while. Yeah, but um, uh, another thing we have to set up is this. Uh, so the the eco sport uh, mode here. So if you go here, right, uh, we're not going to use sport. That will drain energy, I guess. Uh, comfort is the standard setting, and then eco pro, yeah, is probably what we will use. Now we have eco pro plus, but eco pro plus will ra uh, limit the ch the speed to 90 kilometers per hour on the speedometer, which is about 86, 87 kilometers per hour. Uh, but the other problem with Eco Pro Plus is that it will limit the heater. So um, um, I think I'm not going to go that ninja. So I will use Eco Pro, which most people will use. Yeah. All right. Now we're just waiting for paint to dry, which is to get the last 0.5%. <laughs> oh, yes, we are at 100%. So let's restart the trip meters let me see uh it's a bit clumsy I have to go in here uh, 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 uh vehicle stuff no the driving information uh, so many layers of menu uh, it's, it's a trip computer yes this one uh and then uh you have to be an engineer to understand this reset yes okay good to go Oh yeah, we are on the move, and uh, I figured out that I have to cruise at 93 kilometers per hour to match the 90 kilometers per hour on the GPS. So um, yeah, I, mean, I like this that you know there's only one way to to uh, display speedometer, which is digitally. Yeah, that analog gauge crap is out. So like I mentioned, you know, this is a. Uh, in my opinion, a good EV. Uh, it might not score as high as a car, but at least as an EV, it's it's pretty good. Um, so uh, now GOM says 200 kilometers. It will uh, adjust uh, as we drive along, and the consumption is uh, starting to stabilize. But it's still way too early. You see, we are only driven six kilometers. Um, so oh yeah, ooh, we're gonna check something soon. We're gonna weigh the car. <laughs> but at least you know this car has adaptive cruise control which I'm using right now I can change the, the setting here with this this following distance oh no hang on uh, I need following distance to be one yeah that's the typical BMW driver they want to tailgate as close as possible so yeah I'm gonna lose a bunch of BMW subscribers now like uh, like Hodor but uh, please come back <laughs> Oh, uh oh, um, okay, let's just skip the weighing because you know uh, they have control here. All the trucks have to pull over and they're going to check uh, stuff. Yeah, from time to time they will have control like this. Uh, so that means that the scale might be busy and I'm not gonna like ninja it. So um, it's supposed to be about 1400 kilos. Yeah, there you go. Alright, so we skip the way the weighing. Maybe I can do it on the return or something. Yeah, yeah, let's try that later. Yeah. Uh, now we see that uh, we have headwind because the consumption is somewhat high, 175 so far. But we have headwind. You see here in the windsock. Yeah, uh, and you can also see on the lake here, Mjosa or Mjosen that we have headwind. So the, the consumption will be high on the way north and then when we turn around it will drop. So um, this is good, you know, this is why I like testing around here because it is quiet, and less traffic. We have all these elements, um, and all these helpers, uh, check wind and all that. And also the scale, so it's like the perfect testing ground for Tesla Bjorn. <laughs> 
Oh wow, finally nice weather in Norway. It's been raining for the past week or so. But look here, great news. Uh, we have done 44 kilometers now uh, in headwind and we are down to 82%. So uh, it seems like we should be able to push this car to 250 kilometers. Ooh. So the the WVT, otherwise the VLTP range is um, two, uh, 310 kilometers. So um, well, if we can match 250, that that is uh, close enough. I mean, you have to keep keep in mind it's winter here, like winter temperature. So in summer, maybe we can push it to 300, but not now. Oh shit! What the heck? So you know, I get sun in my face, and then suddenly the cruise control is deactivated. It's kind of hard to show you here, but there's a message there saying this cruise control is deactivated. So I have to reactivate. Is it active? No, it's still it's still knocked out because of this, because we have sun. Uh, I just happened one before here before I shot the, there there there. Now I can reactivate it. So this is a weakness of i3, which is that it uses only cameras for uh, adaptive cruise control. It doesn't have radar like most other ca uh, cars with adaptive cruise control. So um, I mentioned, I mean, I, I've i seen this before when I tested the, the previous version that in low sun or especially if you enter or exit the tunnel, then the cruise control will be knocked out. So um, mm, that is not good. Nah, nine, scheiße. Yeah, so I found uh, a fix for it. Um, it says in the message here, so what you have to do is, you see, now we have adaptive cruise control. Uh, if you hold down the button for uh, changing distance, there, then distance control is deactivated. Now, you can resume cruise control and it will ignore whatever traffic is ahead. Yeah, I wish Tesla had that too. Alright, we just turned back now at Dale and uh, we have done 101 kilometers so far, down to 59%. GOM estimates uh, 153 kilometers left. Hmm. And uh, on the first stretch, we average 170 watt per kilometer, and then on the way back with Tailwind, it dropped to 165, and now it's going to go up again. So, yeah, <laughs> it will go up and down, up and down, but it will probably stabilize. Uh, not sure how much but yeah it seems like less than 170 and the road here is like mostly dry but it's not completely dry it's like damped uh, and then the temperature outside is uh, or is it there yeah see 1.5 degrees Celsius yeah so not the best driving conditions so you can just estimate uh, what the range for you would be in summer temperature or yeah Oh yes, the scale is now available. So the new uh, battery size is only 10 kilos heavier than the old one. Um, so let me see the guessing game. Uh, I guess I mean, this is a fully loaded car with lots of equipment. So I'm guessing uh, 3,000. Wait, I mean <coughs> 1,380 kilos. Yeah, including driver, fat driver. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Oh, okay, what's it gonna be? There. Ooh, whoa, 1,440, ooh, -hoo -hoo. what the heck, okay, yes, there you go, uh, I weigh like 75 kilos, by the way, so uh, there you have it, the weight of the i3s, 121 amp hour, yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, we are down to 38% and I have to start thinking about turning back. But this is a nice feature with the i3 is that um, in one of the trip meters here, you can have, you see to the left there you have how many kilometers of range you have and then I plotted in uh, Nebenes. Uh, so 43 kilometers left and now we have a margin of like uh, 30 kilometers. So I would just keep going. Uh, and then at the next exit, it will recalculate again. So yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, see here it wanted me to turn, and then I didn't turn, and then recalculate. Wait, wait, we have to wait. Thirty-nine. Boom! There you go. Fifty-eight. Okay. So if I go for the next one, 
then I will have like 15 kilometers of... Uh, yeah, that's that's the pro turning point anyway. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. Oh, nice sunset for once uh, in many, many days. So uh, for the following days, we'll, be, we'll have some nice weather. Yeah. Too much rain lately. Uh, the time now is uh, 3.40 in the afternoon and the sun has set. So we are down to 16%. Mm, Gom says I have 39 kilometers of range left. Yeah, that is plausible. And we are getting close to Nebene, so we'll turn around and take a, a short loop, which is 20 kilometers long. Yeah, that should be enough. So, so far we average 164 watt per kilometer. Mm, not too bad, okay? Almost 200 kilometers driven so far. <laughs> cool. Yes, we are back at the Nebenes, juicing up. So if you look at the screenshot here, you see that uh, we managed to drive 220 kilometers and we had uh, seven kilometers of range left. So um, I wouldn't drive much deeper than this. So uh, yeah, 6% um, left. Oh, okay, I mean, you can try to drive it down to 1%, but okay, let's say all right, uh, 225 kilometers of range then. Uh, but this is like winter-ish temperature, so uh, in summer, probably 250. Yeah, so that that is pretty good. I tested the e-golf recently, and I managed 190 kilometers. So this is better than e-golf. Uh, uh, my gut feeling says it's also better than uh, the Zoe 40 kilowatt hour. Uh, it should be better than um, uh, Ionic also. Ionic has a much smaller battery, so I had to test Ionic in these conditions too. But um, yeah, so there you have it. The range test of the 120... Okay, I'm gonna stop saying that. The range test of the 42 kilowatt hour uh, BMW i3. Yes, awesome. So um, I think in the next video, I will test a high speed run. Yeah, 120 kilometers per hour. And then I will do some other tests like a noise test and stuff. But that will be in a separate video. So thank you guys for watching and uh, talk to you later.